there, it's me starting here again and today I'm here with a quite a big scrap haul from Scrap Bruket. Scrap Bruket in Swedish. I got myself the new cinch and some wire cutters to go with it and some wires of course. I've got myself some white, black, silver and I got them in the three and a quarter of an inch and I got myself some in one inch and one and a quarter as well as these spiral coils so now I can start making albums let's see if I can clear the table a little bit I would like to show you the cinch a little bit in this case it is grey and blue, uh, yellow and it makes square holes instead of round holes and it works like a charm, I'm telling you. You just take your piece of paper, put it in as far in as you can and you pull down the lever and you got your holes there. Easy peasy. It does look the same as the first one, the one with the round holes. It's really easy to work with the cinch. I prefer this one to the Bind It All album. Bind it all. Um, machine actually and I'll be making a video of how I can use this later on but in this case I just wanted to give you a heads up on how I like that then as I was placing my order I came to think about that sometimes I feel like I do need to be able to put my holes further in than one inch in. In this case I can actually put them in to the depth of a six inch and it's quite easy I must tell you. Let's see if I can find myself some eyelets. I have tried this one out a little bit because people have warned me about this one not working properly and that has, ha has actually hindered me from buying it. But now that I had this idea of mine, I thought that I would give it a go anyway. I use mostly the 3 and 16th of an inch holes. So I'm just going to go over the, over the eyelets, I'm sorry. So I'm going to put the, the lever, or what I should call it, from here to the furthest end. Because that way I'm engaging the 3 16th, let's see if I can make it in the right way. You can see that there says 3 16 there. I'm just going to drag it like that. And this one stands on its own on the table, so it's a really nice feature. And now I have to think about putting the paper here, where the hole is being made. There are two places for the holes, because if I'm going to change this one here, it's going to take the other hole instead. And when I'm going to do the crumping or just setting the eyelet, I have to move it yet once more in order to make that one work. So everything works approximately in the same place. So let's see, now I'm going to take the 3 16th and I'm just going to check here as so far to see where I'm ending up with this one. It's easy to punch it. There's the hole, no pressure, no nothing. And then I'm going to move this one there. And in this case, the standard recommendations to set these big eyelets is supposed to be at A1. So you should have A facing 1 from the top to the bottom. And then you're just going to take your piece of paper and the eyelet and put it in like that. And make sure you get the eyelet landing on that piece there. And then you're going to squeeze it like that. So you have to be, pay attention to how you're holding this. You can see it from here, but when I'm shooting this video I can't really show it to you. And then you're just going to squeeze it and there we go. So it's going to crack it open like that, but at least, at least it is going to stay in its place and it's going to do its job. Now I can actually put a ring through this if I want to, or just keep it open. Or perhaps make some more holes and just put some uh, string from them as I would in a pair of skates perhaps. So I do feel like it absolutely does work for what I need. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's see what else did I get. I got myself some chipboard pieces because I'm going to make a couple of albums. 
so I need that and um, here is a guide they say that if I'm going back to the cinch machine again they say that you need to do a couple, uh, bit of punching before you start making or working on your project because there is a bit of oil uh, residue left so just make yourself a template and in this case this is actually a really good guide for knowing that if you're going to put the paper at the end with that ruler stop there you know that this is the space you have if you're going to keep all the pegs in if you were to just pull out one of the pegs you could actually get the hole a little bit further in you could also make it every second hole or perhaps every th third hole it's really easy with that cinch machine and then I've got myself some replacement blades for that Martha Stewart's sing simple trimmer nothing fancy there I did get a little bit wild when I saw these tanks I had to get them it's a pretty good price I must say 15 crowns it's let's say two dollars or something and there are 20 tags two different sizes ten of each and then I went wild when it came to ordering these beautiful books from Tim Holtz and let me open one of them I haven't really seen this pattern before I'm thinking this might be a new one and this book or these books actually is the reason for me starting to finding out how I'm going to make that what I call high hidden binding with the cinch and I've actually started to master it so I'm pretty happy about that I love the fact that they, it's got some kind of a brown bag paper in here I do like the roughness of it and it's about a book really easily bound together just with a piece of rubber band like so so you can keep it together so nothing fancy there but I do like these books so now I can actually start making some beautiful journals if I would feel like so and since I am going to make a couple of albums I also got myself some really terrifically tacky tape and they come in two different widths this time and I'm hoping that will work and I've also got something since before that which is that wide so I'm thinking it's a good thing to actually have them in different widths depending on what you're going to glue down there was another one with those tags let's see what else I got the pliers uh, wire cutters I can just cut it cut them off and I could also bend the ends of those spiral coils let's see I've got a couple of more things to show you I've got myself a die set which is from X-Cut and these are called Happy Days Ticket Stubs Happy Days so there are different kinds of tickets and labels and I'm hoping I'll be having some fun with these and as you can see you can actually stack them on, on top of each other to have a nice look then I've got myself these speech bubbles these are actually called speech bubbles and I do like this it's a fun way to make your project live pages pop I got myself this stencil mainly because of this beautiful splatter there I'm thinking that I could use those new round uh, blending tools from Tim Holtz and I could just ink on a piece of paper and have a beautiful background or something then I saw these craft papers I do like these these feel a pretty thick but I'm thinking that there might be 20 in this pack so perhaps that is what is making it so thick so it's, it's a really sturdy piece of paper there are 20 sheets if I would like to I could just make an album with these easy piece to punch the holes make some covers and then just go with it I could also use these bigger ones these are also 20 sheets in each they are 20 280 grams and they are really nice I do like these craft pieces of paper and then the final one which I haven't even opened up yet I got myself a heavy duty paper trimmer it's a guillotine in my language and uh, I'm hoping this one will be a really good partner of mine when it comes to cutting papers and such so perhaps I'll be making a video of that later so that is it I hope you have a splendid time and I hope to see you soon again bye bye